You might not know this, but a thousand years ago, I made a sacred promise to a monk, and I told him that today, in the May 27th, well, whatever it is, I said I would teach how to make blunder outlines procedurally so you can make any kind of outline shape and stuff like this. I'm here to keep the promise. Um, this is an effect that I've been doing a lot in some of the newer CG Matter animation tutorial video things. Um, outlines are something you'd think are easy to do in Blender, uh, but they're not. So, so let me show you how to make any shape uh, using nodes, using whatever. Let's get into it. So uh, for this, you're going to need Blender. Duh. Uh, use whatever version you want. I'm just going to delete everything and basically start off fresh. Um, long story short, we are going to first make the uh, shape of our outline to get this started. So I'm going to make like a square with some bevels and stuff like that. Uh, once we make the mesh, we're then going to give it a very special UV unwrap, and we'll talk about why that is, and then we're going to do some node stuff, okay? Um, so let's start off with the outline. So whether you want a circle, a square, or whatever, uh, this is the point where we might diverge. So I'm just going to make kind of like a square outline. I'm going to take this, I'm going to bevel the uh, corner, so control B and then V uh, for beveling the Vertex, that's what V is for. So I'm gonna do something like this, or actually let's do something a bit fancier. I'm only gonna do these two are gonna be beveled, and the other two uh, vertices are gonna be control B, V. Uh, they're gonna be rounded bevels. Just to really emphasize, you could do this with whatever shape. So here's the shape of our outline, perfect. You might have a circle, you might have a twisty thing, it might be the shape of a dragon, doesn't matter. What you do is when you have this, you're gonna go into edit mode, you're gonna select faces, and you are going to inset by just a bit. Um, so we're actually making the thickness of the line, if you want to think about it that way. Again, uh, I tried curves, couldn't get it to work, and this is much easier to work with. So uh, make the uh, the size of the thing. You can always edit it later. So you can just take this, scale it up or down, whatever. Uh, we have our outline. Uh, the next step is we somehow need to bring this information of like the direction around the circuit, right? We want this effect to kind of go revolving around here, the drawing on and off. Uh, we somehow need to bring this information into the shader editor. There's no obvious way to do this. Uh, so UV coordinates are what we're going to be using. Okay, so go to UV editing. Um, I want you to basically think about where you want this animation to begin. So the thing starting and revolving around, pick a start point. So it could be this edge. Uh, you can even control R to add in a new edge. So you can have it start somewhere in the middle, whatever you want. I'm just going to add in a new edge right here, um, I suppose. Yeah, whatever. Um, take this, right click, uh, mark seam. So this is going to be the uh, seam of our UV unwrap. I want you to imagine we're going to take this and flatten it out into a very long piece of string. So this is the beginning and end point. Uh, do that, and then we are just going to just run a uh, unwrap on this. I'm just going to select an active face. Uh, you follow active quads, which will either give us what we want or something very close. Um, so you can see this says basically unwrap this thing into a very long uh, strip so where this is the uh, connection point. So you can see uh, this face is the top. This face is the bottom of the chain. Um, it looks kind of good, but everything's kind of diagonal. So let's fix that. Um, easy fix for this is you just take one of these faces and you flatten them. So uh, you can see the Y stuff is in a line. So scale, Y, zero. Now they're flat. Um, and do this for every pair of vertices on this uh, polygon. So I'm scaling on Y. Now I'm scaling on X by zero just in case, although I think they're already aligned. Perfect. Once you've done this, same you know deal. Active quad, select everything. Um, and then we're going to follow active quads. And that uh, makes everything nice and linear and flat. Okay. Uh, take that. We're going to run a pack islands command just so it's going vertically. Um, how thick it is isn't very important. So um, I'm just going to do it like this for visual uh, representation, but it doesn't really matter. So the way I want you to think about this is we've taken our custom outline. You can do whatever you want with this. I just chose this shape. Uh, we gave an unwrap that starts here and goes all the way around relative to the strips y axis. Uh, this means now if we go to the shading workspace, we now have made a super easy way uh, to control this outline. So again, uh, we take our texture coordinates. What did we modify? Our UV coordinates. And you can see the reds kind of already wrapping around. Uh, we take this and we look at the Y coordinates. Again, why do we look at the Y coordinate? It's because this is the one that spans up the strip. Okay. Um, so the Y coordinates is basically going zero and then revolving all the way until it gets to one black gray, 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 white, okay? Um, this makes it super easy to animate because now what we could do it is, is for the drawing on animation. We could do something like a greater than or less than. And you can see now we've uh, made a little drawing thing, okay? 
um, so I can keyframe this. So I'm gonna have it start at zero, make a bit of a timeline, just so we can see what we're doing. 40 frames later, it's gonna be set to one. Boop, nice little outline. Um, by the way, to make this a bit more dramatic and cinematic, let's make this black. I'm so sleep deprived, by the way. I don't know if you can tell. I just need to get a tutorial out and I thought this was a good topic, so here we are. Um, either way, uh, so here is the uh, thing, it's customizable. You could say, oh, how long should this take? That's dependent on the keyframes. Uh, you could talk about the interpolation of it. So here's the normal one, looks kind of boring. Go to graph editor, set this to individual origins or individual centers, scale it by two. Um, and now you can see we have a much snappier. It, speed, or it slows and speeds and does the whole thing, okay? Uh, that's part one. Uh, the second part is I wanted to give this thing a bit of life, which is that like light going around it, uh, which is super easy to do as well, because again, we have this coordinate system set up. Uh, to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the compare, again, with the Y coordinates, because um, the Y coordinate is, again, the one with the strip going vertically. By the way, all this stuff is a uh, node preview. Uh, these things uh, just helpful for showing what's going on. Link in the description, but not uh, important if you don't have it. I'm going to use the compare node uh, with some threshold, which we can actually visualize here. Um, so the way I want you to think about this compare node is one of these sliders says, where are we on this thing? So this is already cool. Um, and the second one gives us the thickness of this thing. So why does this work? Well, what we're doing is we're looking at our Y coordinate again, this thing that revolves around here. As you can see, it revolves around. We are comparing it to some number and saying, make it white if it's within this distance or threshold of it, which means if we make the threshold bigger, it's gonna have a bigger radius in some sense. Um, and if we compare it to a different number, it's gonna look like it's swiping across. Uh, issue is if we go too big, um, it kind of goes to the beginning and end point and then we run out of room because we have a zero to one interval. Um, so what I'm gonna do to make this repeat and be able to go over the seam, just set this to addition because we want to be able to control where this is. So essentially this is the same thing as moving uh, this uh, compare slider. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little custom expression. So hash frame gives us the frame number divided by 40, makes it so that um, it's very slow and it just kind of animates. Um, again, we have this issue where it goes across the seam because it's going past a zero to one interval. We simply fix that by adding in a fraction. And now you can see this thing revolves and doesn't really care about the seam. Uh, this works because if we look at the Y coordinates, um, the fraction just makes it so that when it goes out of bounds, it just revolves back over. So you can see it's going down, it's about to be out of bounds. And then this black strip comes back over, we're comparing it, la di da, and we can make it thinner and whatever, and uh, still control that. Okay, cool, let's tie these ideas together. So I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna use this as the basis uh, for the amount of glow. So I'm gonna have some base level, and then the, the strip is gonna grow, glow, not grow. It'd be weird if it grew, wouldn't it? It's like coming out of the computer. Uh, it's gonna be glowing a bit brighter. So the base is gonna be this addendum. I'm gonna set this to one, by the way, sorry about the construction outside, nothing I can do about that. Um, and this multiplier is just gonna make the strip brighter. So you can kinda tell it's there. Um, easier to see if you enable bloom, so you can see this is much brighter. And you can make that way crazier, okay? Um, so now we have a thing, um, it, it, it works, uh, but we're not actually incorporating this uh, animation that we made in the beginning to have it show up. Uh, so what I wanted to do is have this thing, but have it show up in the beginning. You get it, we need to incorporate both. So you just take these, you multiply them, which basically says um, keep the animation, but only show it where this uh, thing is white, which will make it appear. You, you get the point. So here's what it looks like. Look at that, <laughs> pretty cool. So it draws on and does the thing, etc. Um, and we can control a whole bunch of stuff. The direction of this, just add in a minus sign. Now it's gonna be spinning the other way. Um, and uh, you know, the, the size of it, stuff like this. The, the whole, no, that's the wrong slider. The size of it, now that's crazy. Uh, the whole point of this effect, again, is you just do it with whatever outline. Um, and once you have this material, you just need to like unwrap your new mesh, whatever. Uh, but this is how you make the outline. Again, I'm sorry for being so tired for this one, but I think I expressed the idea pretty well. So either way, uh, hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. The outline effect that was destined to be the monk will be happy.
I don't know why. Blunder didn't exist a thousand years ago, but here we are. Uh, Patreon, it exists. You can get access to this bun file. I'm going to upload it or any bun file I've ever uploaded. That's like a year or two of bun files. That's a lot. Uh, check it out over on Patreon if you want early access to tutorials, if you want exclusive tutorials every once in a while, a couple times a month uh, that are available on neither channel but only for patrons. Uh, it exists there. Patreon's basically a bop and spot. Thank you to all 800 patrons. I just need to go to sleep or something. So I, I'm on my way out. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a thing. Leave a comment below. What's your favorite kind of... I don't care. Bye.